First this morning, the Fine Gael party, since the last election, the biggest party in the door. The rights and liberties secured by the treaty must be preserved. Fine Gael is an enigma. Even its most loyal supporters cannot agree about its founding date. Was it 1922, or was that not common in Ale? The government party is the one party in this country which can secure for the people political and economic salvation. One must go back to the 1920s and the leadership of W.T. Cosgrave for a period when the party was the dominant party in the Irish political system. You know where I stand on law and order. W.T. Cosgrave's son, Liam Cosgrave, leader of Fine Gael and Taoiseach, 1973 to 1977. I stand where I always stood. That's where we all stand. That's where the nation stands. Yeah. Fine Gael was surer of its stand on law and order than it was on ideology. Declan Castle, in view of the fact that uh, Liam Cosgrave was last night spelling out the coalition's policy with regard to uh, welfare benefits, etc., from the archives, a debate chaired by Liam Nolan in the 1973 general election. Um, how much wind has been taken out of the coalition sails by the announcement an hour and a half ago by the teacher? Very little, I would think. But um, I anticipated that before uh, the weekend, we would have had election promises on a massive scale by the government. We've had this before. We've had it in the election some years ago when they promised to drain the Shannon. It's, it's not unusual. Um, I don't think it'll work, frankly. I think it has all the signs of, of a panic reaction to the way this campaign has been running. If it were to work, work would, would it go uh, anywhere towards the formation of, to use your own phrase, a just society? Well, one of the things that we have been agitating for years is a more equitable distribution of wealth. Uh, one of the things we've been pointing out for years is the fact that this country, in fact, has um, a great deal of poverty which isn't recognized and hasn't been adequately dealt with by the government and what we have been agitating for years is to try and get a more equitable distribution of our wealth. I frankly um, am suspicious of a government that as Mr Childers has said has been examining the rates problem for years and then six days before the election pr promises to do something about it. Declan Costello was to pave the way for Garrett Fitzgerald. Kira Meehan in her new book quotes Jim O'Keefe as describing Costello as a John the Baptist as far as Fitzgerald was concerned. The point was that this was the first time that a political party had produced a very detailed program of economic and social reforms. It was in the era of Sean Lamass's dominance in Irish politics for Fianna Fáil in the mid-1960s that Declan Costello developed his radical policy, the Just Society. I think this helped to define the image of the Fine Gael party. This from a documentary on Fine Gael and presented by UCD political scientist and sometime Fine Gael TD and Senator Morris Manning. What did you see as the main characteristics of Fine Gael policy before the Just Society? Well, as I say, different uh, parties have different wings uh, in, in, in Ireland and, and elsewhere. And uh, ours had become, uh, perforce I think, uh, a, the image had been one of a conservative party. Uh, I say perforce because of the um, economic difficulties that the government had been facing and the fact that it had to take very strong measures to deal with them and this had imposed an image on the party when it was in, in office. Now in fact this was in, I realised, I knew that this was a, a, a wrong image and um, I felt that uh, this could be changed, it was desirable for it to be changed, uh, not just purely from the point of view of getting um, votes in an election, but from the point of view of the development of the economic and social affairs of the country. We were the major, second major party in the state. For it to be regarded as a conservative party would, to my mind, would, would, was, was da damaging. Yet there were people in Fine Gael who wanted it to be a conservative party at that time. Yes, there's no doubt about it, uh, just as there were in Fianna Fáil. And, but in, in fact, uh, as I say, the, part, the policies were, I think, um, reforming ones. and. Um, did change what had heretofore been, uh, I think, an incorrect image. Well, how much difficulty did you and those who believed in this policy have in getting it accepted by the party in general and by the party, le party leaders in particular? Well, in fact, there was a very full discussion. First of all, we started off with a, a discussion at the Eruptus party level on um, a number of points and a number of principles, such things as the desirability of economic planning, the desirability of the re redistribu redistribution of wealth, uh, alterations in our um, health and welfare services. 
these principles were very fully discussed over several weeks at the party and were um, agreed in principle. It was then a question of getting these principles put into much greater detail and uh, these were done then in working parties which were established. We brought in outside experts and produced a um, much fuller document which uh, eventually was being discussed in the policy committee but eventually the election was called rather suddenly in 65 and um, they were brought up to the Eruptus party again and um, at that stage there was a general election called the party um, had to take quick decisions on these documents and um, whilst a number of matters in fact weren't reached because of shortage of time a great bulk of the documents were accepted by the party prior to the 65 election. Ciara Meehan sees the then party leader Liam Cosgrave as a more pragmatic politician than he's often given credit for. She's seen him noted as an opponent of the Just Society, but reckons he did support the initiative, if only as a tool for ousting Fianna Fáil. Well, I think it helped, certainly. Declan Costello himself on the legacy of the Just Society and the role it may have played in building the Fine Gael Labour 14-point plan which ousted Fianna Fáil in the 1973 general election. It helped because there were um, undoubtedly people in the Labour Party who felt that Fine Gael was a Conservative Party and that the Labour Party couldn't um, coalesce with it. Now, in fact, the production of these documents showed this wasn't so. And Declan Costello and Gareth Fitzgerald were both kept at arm's length from the party leader, Liam Cosgrave, when he formed the 1973 cabinet. Gareth Fitzgerald was a surprise choice as foreign minister. He was widely expected to be in finance, and Costello was appointed attorney general. Sections of the party to undermine the party itself. Fianna Fáil wanted to exploit and expose differences within Fine Gael when they were in coalition with the Labour Party. Joe Dowling, then an opposition frontbencher for Fianna Fáil. Our people with intellectual control now of the party are people who have uh, red tendencies. It's very difficult to decide now whether where the party is in fact gone, their party without any clear cut political philosophy. And back to Morris Manning's documentary on Fine Gael and his interview with Declan Costello. And how does Declan Costello react to having Fine Gael described as being red or pink and having it described as being dominated by a small group of intellectuals? Well, th these are, are sort of rather shallow statements that are, are made um, without, I think, giving any great thought to it. Um, it's true if the if it's the shade of pink has been referred to if, if it's that means it's a progressive reforming party yes I'd say that's true it's dominated by a small group of intellectuals so that means that there are people thinking and working out policies for the good of the country that's true but the terms used are I would suspect used in a pejorative sense but I would pick them up and say that yes it is true that we are thinking very carefully about economic things and that we have people of very high intelligence in the party who are prepared to think about economic and social policies and it is also true that we are uh, a reforming party and that if that's what the words means I accept them. Some voices from the RTE sound archives reminding us of a largely forgotten chapter in Irish political history and now the subject of Kira Meehan's new book A Just Society for Ireland? Question mark published by Palgrave Macmillan. Her own, her own view is that Costello might have paved the way for Fitzgerald in terms of change and reimagining Fine Gael, but she doesn't agree with certain claims that the Just Society shaped Fine Gael for 20 years after, in policy terms.